Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Fortinet, Accelerate 18. Brought to you by Fortinet. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of Fortinet's Accelerate 2018. I'm Lisa Martin, joined by my co-host Peter Burris, and we're excited to be joined by a Fortinet customer, Troy Miller, the Director of Technical Resources from Clark County School District. Troy, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So you're local, you're in the Vegas area. Tell us a little bit about Clark County. I know there's some, some impressive numbers of size, and about your role. Uh, Clark County School District, we service about 320,000 students a day, 41,000 employees. Um, it's the entire county, which uh, last I heard was about, about the size of Rhode Island. So basically that's a geographically large as well. Um, my role in the district, we're, uh, it's Director of Technical Resources. Uh, we manage the, we bring in 80 gigs of internet each day for all those uh, people to consume and uh, we were responsible for the edge security, so um, we, we don't get down to the desktop yet, but uh, we just make sure they have a accessible and reliable internet. So 320,000 students and 41,000 employees, how many devices is that connecting to your oh, network, or do you have any idea? But even ones that were just district owned might be closer to 420,000 probably, if you count all the labs, and then another, everyone brings in their own one or two or three devices with them, their phone, their iPad, their laptop, so uh, there's not an exact count, but I'm guessing well over 450,000 probably. And you've been with Clark County for a while and you, you've been in, in education for a while. Talk to us about the, the technology evolution that you've seen take place, the opportunities that that gives educators and students as well as the opportunities that it provides on the, on the security side that you have to combat. Yeah, a long time ago, uh, I was taught for four years from I think it was, it was 93 to 97, then I got into the department I'm in now. But uh, yeah, back then it was you know one computer that a teacher didn't know how to use and really turned on, uh, to now uh, they're using, whether it be smart boards, um, giving out uh, iPads, Chromebooks, and so on. Every kid's connected, and it's important. Like we're now a Google school district, so Google Classroom, using Google Sites, and so on. And so uh, it, it's important. And what the, the evolution of that is just that uh, you have, it's, um, when you have a reliable internet, um, and so Fortinet has uh, definitely increased our, our statue in that. And so that day-to-day uh, -day instruction can take place, not interrupt them, because if they lose their internet for two minutes, we've deprived these students for you know, all kinds of education. So, no, it, it's, it's important, and now like everything is relied upon it, even our uh, uh, student management system, our ERP, all that stuff is now some hosted internally, some hosted externally, so security is a very important part of that. And when you think about the role that you play, you have a specific role within the school district. Uh, how does the ability to use a Fortinet-like product inside your role impact your ability to collaborate and coordinate with others in the school district to make sure that everything is running seamlessly? Yeah, that's important is that uh, for us, using the, the, the Fortinets that we have, it was important to be able um, to get a better insight. Um, I'm excited about the stuff at the conference this year to really improve upon that, but um, to be able to uh, properly secure those, uh, say, VPN connections going out to outside services, or to better um, serve the, the students in the schools or other business transactions that take place. So um, it's important on that, and then we can see if something's starting to break down somewhat, where, where to go. And again, our districts, pretty separated, you know, it's uh, siloed a bit. And so it's important we know which department to go to if we're seeing issues with certain things. Now, local governments are notoriously difficult to work with <laughs> for some technology vendors. How has it been for Clark County working with members of the Fortinet ecosystem? Uh, because security is obviously an increasingly important feature of, well, virtually everything, but including local municipalities. Right, yeah, and Fortinet's been awesome. Uh, we worked with them through our uh, managed service provider, Mosaic 451. So when we moved towards uh, uh, Fortinet just a year and a half ago, uh, that made it uh, a very seamless um, uh, move because they had the expertise that we didn't at the time. We were brand new to the Fortinet platform. They brought in people from all over uh, to, to help out with that, to either install it, to set up the policies and so on. So, yeah, working with munis municipalities is, is difficult, working for one's even more difficult, but uh, Fortinet has made that uh, very easy. 
What was the catalyst for bringing on Fortinet in terms of some of the challenges that you guys had with your firewalls? Was there any sort of one event or type of events that really was, yeah. catalyzed, <laughs> hey, we've got, to, we've got to transform here? Yeah, there was a, uh, a series of events actually. About a year and a half ago, we were go undergoing about daily, one hour, two hour DDoS attacks, fra fragmented UDP attacks. And our previous firewall vendors, they couldn't, one, they couldn't diagnose it. And two, even once they did, it couldn't handle it. We were basically firewalling our firewall with our uh, edge router. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that was when I said something has got to change. And uh, that's when I contacted Mosaic 451 and said, I need help. I, need, I can't be doing this every day because the, the staff obviously were upset and, I, and so was I. And so uh, Fortinet actually back then, our, our first in, uh, involvement with Fortinet, they sent out two chassis and said, here, try them out. See if, see if this will stop the attack. We think it will and we got them going within a few days, and sure enough, it, it did. And so that told me I need to make a move. And um, it took some, obviously, some budget uh, trapeze acts to get that done, but um, within six months, we were then on Fortinet. And again, once we got the equipment back, it was all, it was, everyone was uh, able to help out, get a set up, and um, were unique in what we had moving our policies and so on. So they've been integral in that. So impact perspective, it sounds like you went from these daily DDoS attacks to zero mm -hmm. in, yeah. in how short of a time period? Uh, they, they stopped on their own beginning of January of that year, um, but we haven't had one at all since then, or if we, we've had small ones, but the, the Fortinet's handled them without a problem, they barely bumped them, you know. It's a pretty big impact there that you've been able to make. Oh yeah, we, yeah, we went quickly. from, mm, yeah. Yeah, it was six months before we finally made the Fortinet decision. And that was, we were fortunate we didn't have to go through an RFP process on that because that would have taken forever and I didn't want to do that. And so um, I already said we did our RFP. This one doesn't work. We know this other one doesn't work. So guess what's left? So um, that's the way we ended up with Fortinet. Like I said, we're, we're very happy with them so far. In terms of some of the announcements that they have made today, um, around uh, use, utilizing AI technology. Mm -hmm. They've also talked about their um, Fabric Ready partner program. You talked mm -hmm. about a partner there. What are some of the things that excite you about what you've heard from them today? Does that give you um, reassurance that not only do we make the right decision, but this is something that's going to help us as we evolve and as security threats naturally mm -hmm. evolve and grow as well, that you feel like you have a good foundation of, on the security side? Yes. Yeah, precisely. I'm very excited from what I saw. And you know, there's things, education, especially in this state, is extremely underfunded. So um, I'd love to go out and just say, oh, I'd like to buy this, like to buy that. And you know, we're, we're up and running with the security fabric. You know, I'm excited about it. But what I'm really excited is the opportunity to, to grow. We can really show some progress with that. And so while um, I can't take full advantage of it or even go to the uh, Ford OS 6 probably anytime soon, but we will be able to start laying the groundwork and I can plan out to start you know, filling off those check boxes in, the, uh, in that security fabric and start providing a better, more secure internet for what I'm responsible for, what I can consume. So education, like everything else, is changing. What are the uh, set of options that become more available to you and to Clark County School District as a consequence of bringing in a new security fabric that's capable of accommodating a little bit more complexity, a little bit more automation. Well, yes, and uh, a little bit of all of that. For us, um, what I'm excited about with the Fortinet is that one, we've got something robust that's going to last us for five to seven years. So those will, those will last um, even beyond our 80 gigs we're using now. If we need to go beyond that before I retire, but. The exciting part of that is, um, like I said, by adding in those different security fabric pieces, um, I think we'll be able to improve bit by bit. Um, and I know, you know, while they're going to improve them even more by the time we finally get there. So uh, that's exciting. You talked about, um, I'd like you to elaborate a little bit more on the, your organization. It sounds, um, I don't want to say fragmented, but there's, there's different centers. How, has, has, I should say, what you guys have been able to achieve by bringing Fortinet in, in terms of, we talked about, you know, the, the, this dramatic reduction or elimination of DDoS. Mm -hmm. Are you able to leverage that as sort of a best practice within the school district? Do you see opportunities that this uh, Fortinet partnership can have for you in that respect? It gives us some uh, validity and, you know, shows that it, it did make a difference. We didn't just spend some money on no reason. But, um, yeah, because of it being siloed, it, what, 
what the Fortinet will give us now is we can know exactly which department to send certain tickets to. You know, what we see, whether it's be malware or something pinging out that shouldn't, we can better address where it's coming from and what to do with it. And again, uh, Mosaic is our SOC, so working with them, working with Fortinet, we've been able to um, improve our uh, response to minor incidents as they happen. Are there other natural issues that the County of Las Vegas deals with that makes Fortinet especially relevant? I mean, obviously great distances, but you know, you got large mountains surrounding here. It's a very dry environment. Are you finding that there's just things about the location that makes Fortinet that much better choice? I don't know if there's anything environmental. Um, pretty much what makes us, kind of what I said, on the best choice, not really where we are, but just um, what we do. And so, um, like I said, the internet comes to us, and then we, we kind of spray it out from there. And so it, that availability and reliability is what's important. Um, the, you know, just sort of where we are doesn't quite matter, but it is the, uh, the ability to be able to service the customers. So if we kind of look at the, the security kind of transformation that you're on, you've talked to us about some of the achievements that you've made so far in the first year or so. What are some of the things throughout the rest of 2018 that you're looking forward to enabling in your environment with your Fortinet partnership? Uh, some of the things I'm excited about there is, uh, like you had mentioned before, the AI part of that, that I'm, I'm really excited to hopefully implement. Um, that just takes some, I, I can use the eyes I have, I only have four security people, basically, for that organization. Uh, two of them from Mosaic, two of my own people. And so if I can have those people addressing bigger concerns than malware or stuff like that, and if the AI can better handle that, so instead of digging through logs, we can just, there it is, block it, or it's already blocked. Um, that would save us, and I can use that talent for for more serious items, you know. We're completing, a, uh, we've already completed our edge redesign and networks, and we're now redundant on that. We're working on our internal network, so if we can spend more time making those things more robust to then take advantage of um, the security fabric as, it, as, it, um, as we're able to take advantage of it, then that's all the better. In most enterprises, there's a partnership that has to be established between security architecture, security operations, the business, and especially employees. Mm. Employees have to take an active role to successfully do security. Kids and schools are not necessarily well known nope. for having consistent <laughs> behaviors. How has that affected your environment and what can enterprises learn as they think about having to serve increasingly and really customers uh, in their markets? Yeah, that's one of the, one of the things I'm, I'm just starting to dip my toe into to plan for next year is more of an education for it but then holding them accountable for, for that education. Um, yeah, I don't know which is worse, the teachers or the students. <laughs> I'm guessing the teachers. But um, they'll click on anything they, they see. So it's, it's important to, to educate them first before I start rolling out some you know, phishing testing on them and so on. But, but it, we have to start doing that because otherwise it doesn't matter how, if something comes in or if they get it off their, off their tablet or you know, now they've, in, they've infected the internal right. and it didn't even get to us, right? And so, it's important, that education is important. Uh, we're going to start trying to hold them accountable for it, but it, that's a huge challenge in where, where I'm at. That's, that's like climbing Everest there. Yeah. So is Fortinet going to help? I think it will. Uh, Fortinet's going to be able to help for us to be able to have that insight on, on what's still working, what's, what's not. You know, we're still seeing these things. All right. And also how, recognizing how patterns and seeing what, exactly. what people tend to do wrong will mm -hmm. probably help you pinpoint what you need to, that, that partnership, right. what the user needs to take more responsibility right. for. Right, and that's the thing, it better identifies those, those issues. We can either see where they've improved or what still needs to be worked on. Great. Well, congratulations on what you've achieved so far. Oh, thank you. Um, and, sh and thank you so much for sharing your success story with us. You're on a journey, we wish you continued success with that. <laughs> thank you. For my co-host Peter Burris, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE's coverage of Fortinet Accelerate 2018. We'll be right back after a short break. <laughs>